right so welcome to removal partial dentures review series number four okay all right so question number 16 what is true about reciprocal arm a it has an action equal and additive to an action of retentive arm b it has an arm located over the height of contour. C. It contacts the tooth after the reciprocal arm contacts the tooth. Or D or the above. Okay. So the correct answer is a reciprocal arm has an arm which is located over the height of contour. That's what reciprocal arm is. Because if you place it if you place the this arm below the height of contour then it's going to be a retentive arm and you don't want two retentive arms okay so our answer is b all right so here is um, a summary on a reciprocal arm all right so the action of retentive arm when flexing over the height of contour is counteracted by the reciprocating clasp, which is the reciprocal arm. And the reciprocal arm uh, is located 180 degrees around the tooth from the direction of the force of the retentive arm. So when, when the force of occlusion move, uh, it cause, the, cause the retentive arm to engage the tooth, the reciprocal arm puts the counteractive uh, force to maintain the tooth is in position in, in its original position so that the tooth doesn't move because of the forces okay and the reciprocal arm contacts the tooth before or at the same time as the retentive clasp because otherwise if the, the if the retentive arm does, uh, if the reciprocal arm does not contact the tooth immediately and then when the retentive arm or retentive clasp engages the tooth the tooth will start moving and so you need a counteractive force from the reciprocating arm to ma to maintain the tooth position and prevent the tooth from moving okay so you have to understand the mechanics uh, uh behind the clasps of uh, a removable partial denture okay question 16 so question 17 a component of a removable partial denture that dissipates vertical and horizontal force is what okay a a reset b major connector c minor connector d or the above so what component of a rpd dissipates vertical and horizontal forces okay so if you said the rest seat you are correct the rest seat the function of the rest seat is to dissipate vertical and horizontal forces of uh, an rpd okay and if so you have to review the, the the first series the second series okay and the third series remember there are three videos before this one so you have to because we discussed the receipts in the previous videos okay however we'll give you a definition of a receipt a receipt is a rigid extension of a partial denture which contacts a, a remaining tooth to dissipate vertical and horizontal forces okay so question 18 which of the following statement is true about the occlusal rest preparation so you have to know about the occlusal rest preparation a the center of the rest is 1 to 1.5 millimeters deeper than the marginal ridge this center of the rest is 0 
to one millimeter deeper than the marginal ridge or C, the apex of the rest is towards the marginal ridge. Or D, the rest is convex with its center 1.5, 1 to 1.5 deeper than the marginal ridge. Okay? So here the answer is B. Okay? So the, you have to know that the rest, okay? The rest is, is usually like this. So you have, if you prepare the tooth, okay, you have to reduce the marginal ridge. The marginal ridge of the tooth has to be reduced about 1.5, okay? So 1 to 1 1.5, you have to reduce the marginal ridge. However, the center of the rest is about 0.5. 5 to 1 millimeter deeper okay so here is the marginal ridge this point and the deepest point will be the center of it okay so if this is one one uh one to 1 1.5 reduction of the marginal ridge okay so you remember you have to reduce the marginal ridge the marginal ridge is reduced 1 to 1.5. It means the center has to be reduced about 2 to 3 millimeters deep. Okay? Because it has to be 0.5 to 1 millimeter deeper than the marginal ridge. So remember that. Okay? So the occlusal rest is located on the occlusal fossa of molars or premolars. It is usually concave not convex it is concave like spoon shape okay that's why that's why i told you the center here is deeper than here okay so it is concave spoon shaped and the apex is towards the center the apex is not towards the marginal ridge the apex of the of the occlusal rest is towards the center the center of the occlusal surface and the marginal ridge reduction is 1 to 1.5 make sure you know the the actual reductions of the rest okay and the center of the rest is 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter deeper than than the marginal ridge reduction okay 1.5 to 1 millimeter deeper than the marginal ridge reduction. Okay. Okay, so let's look at question number 19. For occlusal rest seat, what is allowable reduction of the marginal ridge? We just discussed this. Okay, so if you said a 1 to 1.5 you are correct because we just discussed this in the in the previous um, question okay so our answer is b all right so here the same the same as the previous question so you have to know that the the marginal ridge reduction is 1 to 1.5 millimeters okay and the rest center the center of the rest of occlusal rest is 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter deeper than the marginal ridge reduction okay make sure you, re you review the characteristic of occlusal rest question number 20 what is bidding of a cast so you have to know what's the bidding of a cast so the bidding of a cast a is a it, it's a shallow groove of the maxillary master cast is a shallow groove of a mandibular master cast it signifies areas that are in contact with acrylic in the maxilla it signifies areas that are in contact with acrylic in the mandible okay so which one is correct so our answer is a beading of a cast Okay, usually it's creation of a, a shallow groove on the maxillary master cast. Okay, and 
what's the purpose of bidding so the bidding is the 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 the, 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 the scratching or scribing of a shallow groove on the maxwell mastercast this outlines the major connector in those areas that are not in contact with the acrylic okay and what are the, what's the purpose of the of the of the of the beading of a maxwell mastercast is it helps to transfer the major connector design to the investment cast and it provides visible finishing line for the wax up and casting in the lab you know uh, these days you just you, you take impression you pour the, the the cast and you send those to the to the to the outside lab okay and however all these things are done by the by the lab technician but if you had to do it yourself then you have to make sure you beat you beat the cast so that you know uh the um how to transfer the major connected design on the onto the investment cast okay but you have to know that what, what, what bidding is and the purpose of bidding. It also helps to ensure contact with selected palato tissues and it gives the major connector added. It helps to, to whenever you can see the design on the, on the master cast and being transferred to the investing cast and it can help you to actually give a proper bulk of the of the major connector to give it uh, some rigidity okay and uh, question 21 what is correct about the type one survey line so you have to know about survey lines if you're going to make an rpd you know you have to use a survey a, a, a surveyor and the surveyor it helps to to have the the correct path of insertion okay or path of with withdrawal and that path of insertion has to be unimpeded because otherwise if if you don't uh, uh, find the proper path of insertion either the patient won't be able to to remove the the rpd by her by him or herself and and you may actually cause a uh, damage to teeth when they, when you're trying to remove the rpd so you have to make sure that you survey the cast before you fabricate your rpd for the proper path of insertion so what is correct about type 1 survey line so the deepest undercut in type 1 survey line is in the portion of the tooth away from the dental space or b the deepest undercut in the portion of the tooth towards the edential space or C, the deepest undercut may be anywhere on the tooth above the survey line or none of the above. So our answer is A, okay? So this is type one survey line, this is type two survey line, and this is type three survey line, okay? So you make sure you know this, the, the definitions of the survey line, especially the type one survey lines, okay? So type one survey line, the deepest undercut is in the portion of the tooth away from the dental space. Okay. Type two survey line, the deepest undercut is in the portion of the tooth adjacent to the dental space. And the deepest undercut in type three survey line may be anywhere on the tooth below the survey line okay so the purposes you have to know the purposes of the surveyor okay the surveyor may be used for surveying the the diagnostic cast recontouring abutment teeth on the on the on the diagnostic cast contouring wax patterns measuring a specific depth of uh, undercuts or can be used to survey ceramic veneer crowns placing into intracoronal uh, retainers placing inter internal rest or machining certain uh, uh, cast restorations okay so you you have to make sure that uh, you survey your cast and if you survey the cast and there's uh, some deep undercuts those undercuts may be blocked so you have a good path of insertion or withdrawal okay All right, so 
coming up next is going to be the the rpd review series number five okay um make sure you look out for them and you are going to receive the notifications uh for the for the upcoming videos okay good luck and keep studying hard remember these these exams are not difficult so you just have to make sure that you review the correct material